Okay, uh, we've had quite a good morning so far. This is uh, a fisher caught on a tiger nut setup using the new Ace Razor Point zig hooks. Yeah, zig hooks. There's a 27 and a half pound chunk, caught right close in. Okay, let's show you how to tie the rig. Ah, yes. morning. Right, I'm going to show you how to tie the rig I caught the fish on. Um, it's a marginal rig and for my preference mini tigers have to be the best margin bait that there is. Now for my bait and my rig I want my hook bait to be the first in the carp's mouth so we need to counterbalance that a little bit. And for that I use a short section of 6mm cork. Now I know uh, from experience obviously doing this a lot that my setup with a size 10 hook about 3 millimeters slice of this cork will counterbalance the whole rig perfectly. So let's pick ourselves a nice bright white tiger. If you can see that particular tiger is a lot whiter and what I generally do is then give it a rub on a bit of cloth or your clothing and can you see there it's actually come up a lot brighter. What we want is the carp to focus in and pick that one first before anything else. It doesn't have to be exact because the carp will be sucking in a general area but we want it to focus in on that area. Okay, so let's mount the tiger and get the counterbalance cork in position so we can tie the hair. As I said, for a size 10 hook with this rig, two and a half to three mil section of cork is all you need. And the cork itself is it's not exactly the same colour, but it's a very similar colour to a clean tiger. So it doesn't, although it's actually above and sitting on top of the tiger, it doesn't seem to put the carp off at all. So we've got the bait mounted and counterbalanced. Let's tie the actual rig. And for this, I'm going to use the Ace Camo Core in weed. Now this is a coated braid. It's got a very supple um, braid underneath. So when you strip it back, you've got superb movement. Okay, so tie ourselves a little hair. We want the, uh, the tiger to be as tight to the shank as you can possibly get it with this rig. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Now it's simply just a case of mounting the hair stop to hold it all in place. Oops. There we go.
as you can see, a nice dainty little tiger on the camo core. Now the reason I use the camo core, not only is it very supple in the middle, but it changes colour every inch or so, if you can see, and that helps blend in with the bottom because the colour's broken up, you tend not to get a solid line showing on the bottom. So it's a very good braid for hiding your rig. So I'll cut off about 10 inches, 12 inches. It's a short rig. Generally speaking, I tie it to about three and a half, four inches long. Now for this rig, I'm going to use the razor point size 10 zig hook. Now it's a zig hook, but it's a very strong zig hook. And what I like about it is the superb sharpness of the straight point. It's a very tapered um, point, and so you get superb penetration with very little weight needed, which is just about right, because I like to use very light leads for less disturbance as possible. As you can see, each of these hooks comes individually clipped into the pack, so you're not going to get the points dinked in transit or anything like that. We're going to use a straightforward knotless knot, and as I said, a minute ago, we want to tie it as tight to the shank as possible. If we can get it so the actual tiger is sat on the curve of the hook, that's the main objective really, as tight as possible to the curve of the hook. So we'll whip the knotless knot, which can be a little fiddly with these small hooks just takes a little bit of patience. And there we go. Just about the perfect positioning. Okay. Now the reason we want no hair or as little hair as possible. It's one thing I have noticed in marginal fishing. If you've got a bait that's moving, you don't have to have any movement in the water, just a fish moving past it or coming in and having a suck and backing back when they chew is enough to make a counterbalance bait waft in the water. Now, moving baits in the water when all the other free baits are not moving is not a good idea. Um, so I try and get it as tight to the hook as possible and the hook will actually hold it stationary and solid on the bottom. I now measure out the roughly the length of hook link I'm after which in this case is going to be about three and a half four inches long and the first thing I do is tie a double overhand loop for attaching to the swivel. Okay, that's all it is. You pull that tight. And that gives us a stiff boom section. What you've got is the material doubled over and we'll loop that through the swivel at the end. And that doubled section forces the bait to actually move, uh, lay away from the lead. Okay, so that's an important section. We'll take the tag off. And then the next bit is to strip about an inch of the coating from the hook going backwards. So we get the hinged effect. So to help me with the stripping back of the 
braid. I use a nice stripping tool. Now, they never used to have stripping tools when I was young, so you end up with a little V in your front teeth. Not very attractive, so use one of these little gizmos. What I'm going to try and do, if you can see, is leave about two to three mil of the coating just coming out of the eye of the hook. So I pulled it down. We want to bear about an inch. There we go. And as you can see, it's actually pulled the coating back. And what I tend to do, give it a quick twist each way. It's a very good technique on all braids, coated braids. Where they're coated, they're put under pressure and pulled through a machine. So all the braid is tightly packed. Give it a twist, it opens them up and they become so much more floppy and supple. So that's the basic rig. All we need to do now is to add heavy metal to that section there and the knot there. Now the reason we do that is for two things. One is to actually hold the hook link down on the bottom so none of it's actually sitting up and getting caught by the fish or the fish feeling it and spooking. Two, and this is the clever part, to aid hooking, bearing in mind we haven't really got a hair, what we want is the hook to find a hook hold before the fish gets a chance to blow. Now the way we do that is by overweighting these two points and they then become a hinge basically your bait sat here the fish sucks up your bait is lighter than all the freebies around it so that flies up fast which then lifts up the first piece of heavy metal the second piece of heavy metal stops the suck and pulls starts pulling the hook and rig back down the first piece of metal continues that and pricks the fish before it even gets a chance to blow. That's the clever part. Okay, so I'll show you the sort of quantity I generally put on this rig and it'll scare you. So we get our pliable heavy metal material knead it a little bit, make it sticky and supple. And on the back section, I like to use a piece about coming up to a pea size almost. It's a large lump. It looks ridiculous and you'd never use such a size lump just to hide the rig. But, as I say, we need a decent sized lump to stop the suck and make the rig pull back in. So that's the first piece. The second piece is generally about half that size. So we're effectively tapering. All right, give those a bit of a twist to make sure they don't move. That's the complete rig. And as you can see, it looks odd, to say the very least. But until you actually put it into practice and start seeing how it works, it's a bit tricky to get your head round, actually laying that out on the ground and fishing with it. But believe you me, one suck from a fish, that goes in the mouth, followed by the smaller piece of heavy metal. It's a bigger piece of heavy metal, and before the fish gets a chance to blow, it's pulling the hook into position, pricking it, and it's job done.
Okay, so we're going to attach the red to a nice select core leader. Nice, nice broken up lead core pattern there. And all we're going to do is just loop it through the swivel. Now the reason we do that is to aid the loop section from not moving around. Basically what we're trying to do is create a boom to push it away from the lead. Now if we used a lead clip, that's going to move quite freely in the lead clip. We don't want that. So all we do, thread the whole rig through itself. Pull it tight. And that then gives you a cracking stiff boom section. And there you go, one devastating margin rig.